More of our discussion now on Scotland's historic independence referendum. Joining me is Simon Marks. He's an award-winning global correspondent, and he's the president of Feature Story News. Welcome to the show, Simon. Thank you, Anand. Well, as you just heard there, words like historic, seismic, if Scotland does get independence, how big a deal is this? It's a huge deal, and it's a huge deal whatever happens, because what is not going to happen is that we're all going to wake up on Friday, come what may, and return to business as usual. We're either going to wake up and discover a narrow victory for the yes side, in which case all bets are off and months and months of complex negotiations have to get underway about how these two countries are going to operate as independent states, or we're going to wake up and find a victory for the no campaign, in which case Scotland is going to come knocking on London's door and saying to the British uh, politicians in London at Westminster, right, now we have to have serious conversations about a serious devolution of power, and this time around, London won't be able to deny that. And you've got to fulfill all those promises you've been making to us to give us more power. Absolutely, no question about it. You've seen in the last couple of weeks as the opinion polls have tightened, and look, I mean, back in June, no one would have thought we'd be looking at a race that was too close to call. It seemed evident that the no campaign was going to win. As it's run into trouble, you've seen David Cameron, Ed Miliband, the leader of the Labour Party, Nick Clegg, the leader of the Liberal Democrats, who of course are in coalition with David Cameron, trailing up to Scotland and making all sorts of promises in a bid to get voters to vote no. Well, if they vote no, those voters are going to want a payout on those promises, and you, you're going to see a Scotland, come what may, with more power. Right, you talked about the relationship with England, but then Scotland would also have to deal with its place in the world, or specifically in Europe. It will have to, I guess, reapply for membership of the European Union and, and NATO. Absolutely. And again, whatever happens, this is a changed world. If the Yes campaign wins, Scotland has to go after its own membership of the European Union and NATO. EU membership's going to be very tough. The Spanish, for a start, are going to stand up and say, we don't think they should be in there. Uh, England will have to work out what it does about all the nuclear submarines currently uh, in a harbour at Faz Lane in Scotland. If uh, David Cameron's leadership is in question, that leads to big questions here, where President Obama's talking about this international coalition to fight in Iraq. Well, David Cameron may not be able to deliver on those kinds of pledges. And if the victory is for no, the, the politicians in London are going to get so sucked into this debate about devolved powers, it has the potential to alter the outcome of the next election in Britain. What about the initial political ramifications in England? Because if there is a yes vote, I mean, what about David Cameron's future then? Uh, most analysts tell you that David Cameron will not survive as British Prime Minister. I mean, as one of my colleagues in the UK puts it, one of the jobs of Britain's Prime Minister is really to keep Britain together as a country. And the point at which a bit of Britain disappears is a very black mark for a British Prime Minister. So whether he's able to retain his leadership role, I think, is an enormous question. And the answer to that question then has huge global consequences. Here's an interesting question, and that is an independent Scotland's relationship with the royal family. Yes, fascinating. I mean, they have a home in Scotland. They have a home in Council. Scotland. And, <laughs> and, I mean, you know, one of the arguments that Alex Hammond has been advancing to voters, the leader of the Scottish National Party, Scotland's First Minister, is essentially, you can have it all. You can be an independent Scotland, and you can still have the Queen, because he says that he is convinced that she will be more than happy to be Queen of an independent Scotland. Well, you know, most countries and voters looking at this idea of breaking away from the motherland, if you like, would find it rather curious that you would be advancing the argument, but the Queen is still going to be playing a prominent role up here. So all of that has to be worked out. There's precedent for it, of course. She plays a role in Canada. She plays a role in Australia. They're independent nations, but it's clearly a very different role. Simon, going to have to leave it there. Thanks for joining us, Thanks, sir. Thanks, Simon.